We are going to get a fountainscape in here, get the sights and sounds of the fountainscape to help drown out some of that white noise from the traffic. And then you can see some pink flags kind of marked and that's where some additional evergreens and screening trees are going to go in. The pathway is going to lead you down to a landing from these stairs. It will Y off, part of the pathway will go that way. The other part of the path will kind of meander its way back around here, taking you just to the right of that maple tree. So we're gonna strip out all of this grass. Our reservoir is gonna go over into there. Our trio of urns, the small, the medium, and the large urn are going to go over into there. We also have two and a half tons of Pennsylvania field sown to use as accent boulders. We're really, really excited to do this project because by the end of the day, this whole thing will go from what looks really boring and drab and vacant to full of life with the energy that the trio of Saxlade urns is going to create. What is up everybody out there? Chris from Team Aquascape. We have a really fun fountainscape for you today, folks. We have a large, a medium, and a small stack slate urn today with 15 small aqua blocks, a 25 by 25 liner, about two and a half tons of Pennsylvania field stone. We're gonna do a black crushed granite pathway. And then we have a black decomposed granite pathway as well. And we are going to be putting that fountainscape in this planting area directly behind me. You can see there is a large second story or raised deck above the house. There's also a gazebo. The idea is, to help screen some of the noise. They had some enormous evergreens. You can see this like 40 foot spruce. There's a couple of them. They used to have a bunch of them right in here which screened the road noise from that busy street back behind them. So the idea is, is we are going to get a fountainscape in here, get the sights and sounds of the fountainscape to help drown out some of that white noise from the traffic. And then you can see some pink flags kind of marked and that's where some additional evergreens and screening trees are going to go in. The pathway is going to lead you down to a landing from these stairs. It will Y off part of the pathway will go that way. The other part of the path will kind of meander its way back around here, taking you just to the right of that maple tree. So we're gonna strip out all of this grass. Our reservoir is gonna go over into there. Our trio of urns, the small, the medium, and the large urn are gonna go over into there. We also have two and a half tons of Pennsylvania field sown to use as accent boulders, just to kind of get creative with the shape. We may tuck one into the pathway as we are building it out, but we're really, really excited to do this project because by the end of the day, this whole thing will go from what looks really boring and drab and vacant to full of life with the energy that the trio of Saxlade Urns is going to create just by the simple sounds of the running water. It's going to look incredible. We've got our work cut out for us today. Access is a little tight in through here, but not unlike most of our jobs, we're used to that challenge. So first things first, get the mats down, get the machines back here, and then get that grass out. Okay, so here's our access. We are going to get the machine back this way. So we've got our grass stripped out of here. We've got everything kind of leveled off to where we want it to be. This is that meandering pathway that we talked about earlier in the video. You can see that it goes back out that way. Corey is finishing up spray painting the footprint of the reservoir. Then we're gonna go ahead and start digging. We're not going to recess these down a whole lot further than you know our 10 and a half inches or so. We'll probably go down a foot and that's about it. We have an oversized liner of a 20 by 25. I think I, earlier in the video I said a 25 by 25. But the reason we did that is to compensate for all the splash that's gonna to happen because of these urns. So we're gonna get the reservoir in. So we'll pull these aqua blocks off to the side, start digging. We're gonna make some small piles all the way around so that we can build up a little bit around it. There's some low points on either side of the crushed granite pathway that we will use. So we'll pile up a little bit of soil there. That way we're not digging a whole lot or digging down too terribly much for that pathway. We're actually gonna build up along the sides of that edging. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys, but as we're doing this in real time, we will show you how we're achieving our goal. Almost done. So right now, what the guys are doing here is digging in that pump vault location. That's where it will sit. It'll sit on the back side, and then we will disguise it using our urns and rock work surrounding it. We also have some cleanup to do. We were a little bit tight on our hole on a couple of the sides, so we just need to clean this stuff out. We need to go about another four inches to the outside so that we have plenty of room. Luis, throw all that right up there, straight ahead. Thank you. 
we've got a little uh, compacting bar that we use to pack things in as we go. So we just didn't want to have that liner too tight up against that ledge on this wall or any of the walls for that matter. So we just had to take out a little bit more soil. We always dry set the aqua blocks before we get the fabric and liner in. Just if we have to do any modifications like we had to right here, we're able to do that before we've got the weight of the liner and the fabric in here. We sent Jack back to the office. You got the decomposed granite, the steel edging, all that stuff. But we didn't have room on either of our trucks this morning because we had two pallets of stone, a super sack of gravel. We had three pallets of product on the other truck and we had our trailer, mats, two machines, all that good stuff and our job trailer. So we had quite a bit that we brought over here. Fortunately for us, we are only about seven minutes from the shop. So it paid to kind of plan that out and to be efficient. And we're more profitable on this job because of it, because we're not spending 300 bucks a pop on delivery fees and all that stuff. So those are some of the things that we consider when game planning for a job. So we're just gonna finish cleaning up the hole, get the fabric liner in, uh, and then go ahead and put the aqua blocks in and start backfilling. And then we should be able to cruise kind of from there once we get our urns set where we want them. Then we'll start placing in some of those big pieces of field stone. We're gonna hop back and forth a lot from the viewing areas, which are all up here. From this raised deck, the master bedroom is actually right there with that big glass slider. So we really wanna try and make the wife happy and give her the view at night from inside their bedroom. So this is where the magic happens. That's where the magic happens. So we've went to all the different viewing areas in the house, outside of the house, the gazebo, the bedroom, the deck up here, the kitchen, which is those windows back there. And we were able to see 90% of this fountainscape from everywhere inside the house and from all those viewing areas. So we've established that, which is good. Now we are going to plumb everything, get our manifold set up back over there. And then while that's happening, we're gonna start strapping up and putting in some of these big pieces of field stone. We're gonna put down some of our GeoGrid, which is a geotextile material. Let me show you this. So on top of the reservoir, we are going to be putting down some of our geotextile fabric. This is a permeable material. This will go down over top of the aqua blocks. It will allow water to still get down into the aqua blocks, but it will disallow that small 3 8 gravel from migrating down into the aqua blocks because the gravel itself is smaller than the holes in the aqua blocks. So this will just lay down underneath our spheres. And then we're gonna go ahead and start putting our rocks in. What did I say? Oh, spheres, yeah. Jack's right. So I'm gonna drop this underneath our urns. Also one thing I wanted to point out too is we have our lights cut in to the top of our urns as well as our two inch rigid PVC coming up through here. We are going to paint this black before we leave so that there's not this white chunk of pipe. You can see Jack and Luis over here working on the plumbing, laying out the manifolds. This will be a series of ball valves and then we will have three respective two inch lines running to each of our urns. One thing I wanted to mention a second ago talking about the lights is I don't want to have these lights shooting back towards the viewing area. So what I decided to do is I've got this light funneling back towards the bigger and so it will catch all of the water that's shooting up out of this urn as well as cast light on this urn. The light up here right there is going straight back towards that tall spruce tree. What that'll do is that will cast those wavy marks as the beams of light go through the water or are agitated by the water and then this one is shining back from the other side on the big urn and we'll also cast some of those wavy marks on that spruce tree. So we're gonna plumb this. While they're doing that, we'll get the geotextile down. Then we're gonna start scraping out some of the areas that we know we're gonna put some of these big pieces of field stone and then start dropping rock and gravel. So we're starting to get the decomposed granite in. This is that uh, Midnight Gray DG, as we call it. It's a compactable material and it looks absolutely fantastic, especially in conjunction with our stack slate urns. The color resembles it actually really, really well. You can see Luis back there finishing up the lights over here. So we've got a bunch of our three watt lights. These are all white lights in here. He's working on finishing up the connections. There's a chase, as you can see right there, that runs underneath the walkway. Goes over here and then you can see a couple cables squirting out of the lattice. That's where everything's gonna get its power from is that receptacle right there. We're gonna continue to fill this pathway up with the black DG. Go ahead and rake it out, compact it, and then we'll come back in here and feather out all of our edges. I'm using some of the loose dirt that we have to dress up along this side. It looks really, really awesome and I love how it's turning out. We should be firing this thing up relatively shortly in our world. So for you, it's probably gonna be about three seconds. Well, 
as you can see behind me, we have Jack's butt and our three urns up and running. That project is a wrap. It turned out absolutely gorgeous. If you have any questions on how this install happened, make sure you let us know in the comments section below. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, depending on how you feel about it. But thanks for watching. Tune in next time. We'll see you later.